Hello friends, welcome to Susan and John Math Tube. This is lesson number 15 in the examination preparation series and we continue with improper integrals. In the last video, I gave you an introduction about improper integrals and we did a very few basic questions. But in this integral, we will do a little bit of hard questions which they might ask for the exams. Anyway, as always, the most important five points. So, please uh, try to recollect everything. We learned about type 1 improper integrals. Type 1 improper integral means either the lower limit or the upper limit will be plus or minus infinity. So, by just looking at the limits, you will be able to identify type 1 improper integrals. Okay, let's try one question. So, please write, evaluate the integral. Integral minus infinity to infinity. 1 by 1 plus x square dx. So, clearly it is type 1. I can see infinity and minus infinity in this problem. Okay. So, as always on one side of your copy, what we do is we perform the integration. We write the integral without limits and we perform the integration. Sometimes it will be easy like in the last video and even in this question, it is a direct formula tan inverse x. Sometimes you may have to apply integration by parts or maybe some other procedure. Anyway. On one side, what you do is, you write the integral without limits and find the integral value. Okay, and on this side, what you do is, you change the type 1 improper integral into a limiting problem. So, I am going to write limit a tends to minus infinity, b tends to infinity, integral a to b. 1 by 1 plus x square dx. So, here we go. We changed it into a limiting problem. I will repeat once more. Uh, many of you might be wondering why we are not um, what you call substituting this upper limit and lower limit directly. Look at this. There is a question of the existence of improper integrals. Some improper integrals will not exist. I showed you one example, the graph of x square, which keeps on creating uh, what you call bigger, bigger, bigger or what you call longer rectangles or longer lines or the longer function values or the bigger values when we move towards infinity. So, such functions once added will not give us um, a convergent answer. And sometimes, the functions might become asymptotic to the x-axis and in such cases what we do is we after some time the values become so negligible that uh, it's better to leave and that mathematical part is explained by the word limit so remember um, saying something is equal and saying something is the limiting value makes a huge difference and as bachelor first year students you might not feel the difference but remember this is the proper way of dealing things in mathematics okay so let's um, proceed limit a tends to minus infinity b tends to infinity tan inverse x within the limits a to b and that is going to give me limit a tends to minus infinity, b tends to infinity, tan inverse x within the limits a to b. It's the same thing. And that will be limit a tends to minus infinity, b tends to infinity, tan inverse upper limit minus tan inverse lower limit. Now time to plug in the values. Um, I am sure you know the value of tan 90 and tan minus 90 etc. Anyway, you remember one more thing. 
tan inverse minus x is minus tan inverse x. Anyway, we are going to get the value pi by 2 minus minus pi by 2 and that is equal to pi. So, what we conclude is the given integral is improper. Look at this. You have to understand this properly. The given integral is improper. And second thing, the given integral is convergent. Why do we say the word is word convergent? Because we got a finite value. And the third thing, the given integral converges to the value pi. Okay, now let's go for a little bit difficult question. So, please write, evaluate the improper integral 0 to infinity x into e power minus x dx. Okay, so tell me what's the first thing to do? Okay, the first thing to do is uh, we will write the given integral without limits. Okay, it's clear that we have to apply integration by parts because I can see uh, a standard question which you might have learned long back. Okay, now look at this. I'm going to give you a shortcut. It's an awesome shortcut and it's called Bernoulli's rule. Okay, so suppose you have integral u into v. In, and this works properly if the first one is a polynomial and the second one can be exponential or it can be uh, sine or it can be cosine. So for this product, this rule is perfect. And the rule goes like u v bar minus u dash v bar bar plus u double dash v triple bar minus dot 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 and bar stands for integration dash stands for derivative okay i will make it more clear for you suppose we have a question like x square into cos 2x okay you can try you can try it's a challenge you can try to integrate this with integration by parts anyway the order is good because the first one is algebraic function and then comes trigonometric function. And it's a challenge. You try this with integration by parts. I'm sure that it will take at least um, five steps for you. At least, at least five steps till you get the last answer in proper format. Now look at this Bernoulli's trick, the Bernoulli's magic. All you have to do is you write the first function and you integrate the second function okay good and then minus what you do is you differentiate the first function this one and then you integrate the term inside the bracket that will be minus cos 2x by 4 because another 2 will come here and then you put plus because it is like plus minus plus minus plus minus etc and the derivative of 2x is 2 and then you integrate the quantity inside the bracket so that gives me minus sine 2x by 8 again minus but this time the derivative will become 0 that's it it's finished we have the answer Okay, now you try it. Now you try it without Bernoulli's rule. Okay, once more, I'll show you the advantage of Bernoulli's rule. So, suppose we have, okay, let's do our question. Let's go back and do this. I'm going to apply Bernoulli's rule because I told you Bernoulli's rule is perfect if we have polynomial as the first and exponential or sine or cosine as the second. So, we have x and in bracket what I'm going to do is integrate the second function minus I'm going to differentiate this and integrate the quantity inside the bracket plus that's it finished because one differentiated will give us zero that's it integration is finished 
yeah okay that's why law of Bernoulli's method okay now we can take something common that is minus e power minus x and x plus 1 will be inside of course we have to put plus c because it's not a definite integral anymore and this is going to give me minus of x plus 1 by e power x because e power minus x means 1 by e power x see integration is finished now on this side what i do is i convert the question into a limiting problem this is type 1 improper integral because one of the limits is infinity and that's it now i have to use this formula over here that i'll do in the next page so i is equal to limit t tends to infinity what did we get yeah minus x plus 1 the whole divided by e power x within 0 to t i'll keep the minus outside limit t tends to infinity and i'm going to plug in the values i can plug in here i'll use another color so i'm going to plug in the value over here and here and remember this minus is already outside so we're going to get t plus 1 by e power t minus 0 plus 1 by e power 0 and i'm going to split this into two limits uh, i'll take this minus limit inside plus limit t tends to infinity 1 okay so 1 okay now look at this this limit is in the form infinity by infinity because infinity plus 1 is infinity e power infinity is infinity okay so whenever you have infinity by infinity or 0 by 0 you can apply L'Hopital's rule okay so we get minus limit t tends to infinity the derivative of numerator is 1 plus 0 by e power t plus 1 i think i should put a bracket for our safety so i'll repeat once more this limit is in the form infinity by infinity so we apply L'Hopital's rule and that's it now you plug in the value 1 by e power infinity that will be 0 so the answer is 0 plus 1 equal to 1 okay isn't it easy it became really easy because we had Bernoulli's rule to support us okay so the conclusion is like this the given integral is improper what's the reason because one of the limit is infinity the second thing is the given integral is convergent why is it convergent because the final answer converges to 1 approximately it is approximately 1 so let's go for the next question so please write evaluate the improper integral integral 0 to infinity x square into e to the power minus x dx okay clearly this is an improper integral type 1 and on one side i'm really excited to apply our bernoulli's rule x square into e power minus x dx look at this if you apply integration by parts you're going to waste a lot of time you're going to waste a lot of time so whenever you have polynomial and exponential or polynomial and sine or polynomial and cos I will strongly recommend you use Bernoulli's trick it's very easy it just starts like integration by parts there is no change see it's just like integration by parts yeah now what we do is we differentiate this and we integrate the quantity inside the bracket again we differentiate this and we integrate the quantity inside the bracket till the first thing becomes a constant because next term will be zero that's it my friends the integration part is over so we can take e power minus x common 
and what remains is x square plus 2x because I took that negative outside plus 2 um, plus c and that will be minus x square plus 2x plus 2 the whole divided by e power x plus c and what should we do here yeah we have to change the type 1 improper problem into a limiting problem x square e power minus x dx i think it's better to uh, continue in the next page so we know this integral we know this integral we have already calculated here so i'm going to write this as limit t tends to infinity minus x square plus 2x plus 2 the whole divided by e power x within the limit 0 to t and like before i'm going to keep that negative outside so it becomes negative limit t tends to infinity and i'll put the upper limit t square plus 2t plus 2 by e power t minus i'm supposed to put the lower limit so this becomes 0 this becomes 0 so the remaining part is 2 by e power 0 e power 0 is 1 now i'm going to take this inside that minus limit I'll write in the next line. So I'm going to get minus limit t tends to infinity t square plus 2t plus 2 the whole divided by e power t plus limit t tends to infinity 2. And like before, this is again infinity by infinity you can just plug in this value for t and find it yourself it becomes infinity by infinity so L'Hopital's rule is going to rescue us so i'm going to differentiate the numerator and the denominator separately and there is no place to apply the limit so it becomes two. Uh oh it again became infinity by infinity and whenever you have infinity by infinity, you have to apply L'Hopital's rule. So 2 into 1 plus 0. So 2 by e power t plus 2. And this is equal to, yeah, finally. So 2 by infinity, that is 0 plus 2. So the answer is 2. So how will we conclude this? Yeah, we will write the given integral is convergent and it converges to 2 okay so i'm going to wind this video right now i'll be back soon with more problems so till then bye